children are the living message we send to a time that we will never see. This was a quote by John F. Kennedy. The Gold Bug Golf and Gallop is a program strictly for children in Woods County. That includes Winoka, Freedom, and Alba. And it is a free lunch. It truly is a free lunch. The food is funded by the Regional Food Bank. Uh, we work as a committee that is headed by Kelsey Martin. And we work very well together. This is our third year. And we get programs from you all, the community, to educate and have something creative for children to do during the summer. We work very closely with the Alla Public Schools. Uh, this year they would like, they wanted us to do our program during the time that they do their school, summer school, which will start May the 31st and run through June the 22nd. Um, so we want to keep them happy. We need their freezer space. We work at Washington Elementary. Uh, we need the location as far as the cafeteria or the gym or the outside playground so that we can entertain children. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about the food. The food is free. It comes from the Regional Food Bank. I don't know how many more years they will fund or subsidize this, but this is our third year, like I said. This is a sample of what the lunch. Every child has, we have to, we have to follow the rules of the Regional Food Bank. Every child has to receive a sack lunch. It comes with, and I'm kind of glad I looked at this now because these are uh, last, I think if I was here two years ago, if you remember, the sandwiches had like a hoagie bun, and a lot of the kids, that was just way too much bread. These have to be nutritionally balanced. But now the sandwiches are going to be, it looks like a lot of them are on regular bread, which I think that will be a little bit more palatable. And even though it may say ham and cheese, um, turkey and cheese, most of these meats are turkey based. And they used to have a lot of meat on them, too, which didn't really appeal to the kids. The meal um, always freaks the adults out because it is shelf-stable. I think they have used uh, some kind of an ultraviolet light, and it's very tasty. I refrigerate it so that it will be a little bit more palatable to the children, but they usually like it. Then they get two fruit cups, a pineapple, this is just an example because we have applesauce and mixed fruit. And then they always get a spork and they get either mayonnaise or mustard for that. So that's a sample. Now their favorite meal, which is on a Monday usually, is an uncrustable. And if you've ever eaten one of those uncrustable peanut butter and jellies, extremely tasty. They're like a little uh, tart. And they have string cheese and then they have milk and they have two fruits. So we have feed them from 12 to 12.15. We have programming from 12.15 to one o'clock. We do have a bus that will pick children up in the Alva area and we have a bus schedule and the locations. We tried to get the places that we could get the kids, the most kids, um, Buena Vista, that area, Washington, of course, they're going to be there at that Washington school, middle school, um, <coughs> Longfellow. The Lutheran school usually buses their own children. So I just wanted to let you know, since most of you are business people, in 2015, which was our very first year, we served 1,678 lunches and 273 snacks. Now that was the first and only year that we did the snack program, which was a morning uh, program for the kids that were in summer school. And what we found is that once the summer school ended, we didn't have any more kids come for the snack program. And if you say you're going to be open, you have to be open. That period, the first week, the first year was six weeks, which was a total of 24 days. In 2016, last year, we served 1,163 meals, and that was from 6-1 to 6-30, which was a total of 18 days. This year, we're going to serve from May the 31st to June the 22nd, which is the period of time that summer school is going to go on. So we, we're hoping that it 
<coughs> exceeds our expectations. If you have any suggestions about how to get children to the lunch site or to get parents to take them there because that's a lot of times what it amounts to. This program is open to any school age child 18 and under. Um, if they have disabilities, they're also able to come and eat free at the, at the site as well. Yes, Mark? Over the last two years, what was your predominant age? Because I'm thinking you may not have any 16, 17, 18 year olds. No, we traditionally do not. We have them as volunteers. Most of ours are the younger elementary <coughs> kids. We have them. Uh, and I don't really, I would not turn anybody away, but there have been some kids that have been toddlers. You know, we would like for them to be potty trained, but since school age children now can go free, maybe from four years to 18, um, most of the kids are under fifth grade. So a lot of kindergarten to right. fourth grade kind of age. Right, so that first grade, second grade. And, and they're there for an hour. Yes, an hour. We cannot, we cannot serve until noon, so we have some activities for them if they get dropped off a little bit early. Yes, Ida? Can you talk about some of the activities that are forecast for the coming? Sure, we have some amazing people. Um, Chris Green has volunteered to, to have us come out to the Speedway so those kids can watch an actual race. So we will probably give them their lunch and then bust them out to that location. We have the Bratz, uh, the Bratz Menagerie. Now in the past, they have transferred the animals to the playground. This year, we're gonna take the kids to the Menagerie, which I think will be a little bit easier on both, at both locations. Uh, Eagle Med, for the last two years, has actually landed their, motor, their uh, helicopter on the playground. And I, I mean, I think that's amazing that they do that. Um, we have og and &E, we have Kim Foster, which will come and teach them dance. Now, just to keep in mind, the Woods County Coalition sponsors this, and that is a group, because this is something that could not take place by just an individual. But the coalition's focus is on healthy living, so we talk about, we try to focus on nutrition, exercise, uh, healthy lifestyles, drug avoidance, alcohol avoidance, no smoking, um, everything that, I mean, personally, I would have taught my children as they were growing up. So uh, Kim Foster is going to actually come and help them learn to do some dances. Last year, we found that they liked to do the Macarena, uh, the Whip and the Nene, um, some of the line dances, which was a great way to increase exercise and keep them occupied prior to having them eat at noon. So those are just some of the activities that we have planned. I think uh, Dr. Smith, Troy Smith is gonna come. I hope he talks about eye safety. Uh, we have Sally Holder gonna come and talk. I don't know if she's gonna do something about germs. Um, Amber Myers coming with her husband and I think they're gonna do something with a rocket. She's in with the Girl Scouts. So we try to, try to get a varied of things that they will be entertained with, things that they may not have had an exposure to uh, because of their lifestyle. I'm just kind of doing the math in my head. <coughs> if you serve 1,100 meals in 20-some days, so how many would be there every day for noon? Well, that's 30, a question. 40, 50, I mean. That varies. <coughs> the largest group that we had last year, I think we had 100 children one day. Um, children do not have to pre-enroll for this, they so they show can, up. they just show up. This is just an example of the banners that we have. I'm going to put this out in front of Washington <coughs> School, and there will also be one on the vendor property, which is across from the Sonic. So I hope that that appeals to <coughs> people that are in town. If you have grandchildren and they're here, this program runs Monday through Thursday. Please bring them down. And we do have supervision. We have volunteers. If you want to volunteer, we would love to have you come and help. If you don't want to be around the kids, you can come and help sack lunches. You know, it takes a while to, to sack the lunches. I have, my role is one of the site coordinators. This year, um, for the last two years, it's only been me, which has been a lot of pressure because if I'm not there, I can't have the program. This year, Kohana is going to be one of the site coordinators and also Pat and Ida. So hopefully that will kind of get them um, into it and we can get more people interested. You know, my ideas might not be the best and somebody else may have better ideas for activity or for different <coughs> programs.
programs and things like that. So we welcome that. Walmart has donated $150. If you look at this, it didn't take us very long to figure out that we needed to supplement. So we put, you know, we'll have chips. We have uh, those little frozen popsicles. They love those. Those are not very expensive. They have, I get the little individual candy bars. Last year we were donated, and this, this is really a funny story, but the food bank here in town donated a case of oranges and a case of fresh apples. Well, if you are the one doing your food shopping, you realize that fresh fruit is a little bit pricey. So some of these children did not even know what some of the fruits were. One year we got plums, and some of the kids had never had a plum, before, a fresh plum. So I just think that's so odd. And when I sliced oranges, they thought they were, <coughs> one little girl said, I didn't get a lemon. And I said, well, that's not a lemon, that's an orange. And I, and I sliced those, we did the apple slices, I just got slicers. And I thought, oh, those apple slices are gonna go like crazy. And we had a huge amount left over and I went home and I thought, that is crazy that I cannot get kids to eat apple slices. So I went to the cupboard and I had this big thing of peanut butter and I thought, I'm gonna go take that and just scoop that into little cups and see if they'll eat that. The next time we served apple slices with peanut butter, we had to slice more apples. So, and, you know, peanut butter is, is a really good source of protein, so we actually get to count that as one of our protein sources. So I have lots of stories. We've thrown away shoes. We've had kids come and um, their shoes have been, either the sole's been completely gone. One little girl had a pair of sandals and we had to throw those away. Now I'm happy to report that, you know, I can just run over to the Elegant Toad and see if I can find something for them and provide them with a pair of shoes. So it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to help the youth in our community. And um, there are kids out there that are hungry. I'm, I'm just, I just have to repeat that again. There are children in Alva that are hungry. I see them. I see them. They come to the, the center. The people that do these programs, we are passionate about keeping this feeding program, lunch program. So um, just hope that you would support <coughs> it by spreading word to people that you think might know that need it. I also have some forms that came from the Regional Food Bank. Please take them to your <coughs> business. Just post them. Um, and if somebody asks you, you guys will be the people that have all the answers. My phone number is actually the one that's listed. Call, have them call me. I'll tell them where the bus can pick them up. Uh, we'll tell them what time they can be there. We will meet their needs if we need to. How many meals do you say you needed to serve each day? We don't have any any quota. We can serve as many. We can reorder. How many do you need on a daily basis average? See, and that's a, as a site coordinator, that's up to me to, <coughs> to package, I mean, to bag these meals and like the first day I'll probably do 80 or prepare 80. We can keep these up to I think three days after they're defrosted, after the food's defrosted. Um, it, that's, you know, we'll have a better idea after the first day. Show, you know, it just changes day to day. Yes, Tom. So my concern is there's an awful lot of time between June 15th, June 20th and August 15th. Where do they go for food after that? You know, and I'm not sure if there is a, still a backpack program. Um, other than the food pantry, I, I, I can't answer that. And I know that there have been some people that have said, you know, well, that's a great program, but where do they go the rest of the time? You know, I, all I can say is we try to do the best that we can during this period of time. So is the need, the facility is the problem, right? And they're only the one to leave it open during a period right. of time? Right, we can do, the program could go as, as long as, you know, you can do it all summer. And there are some programs that do this in conjunction with, like, the whole day activities, educational activities. Um, I don't know. And, you know, it, we kind of exhaust the volunteers. You'll see the same people will be there this year that have been there the last two years. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity, though, because you're like, if you're like me, you know, my kids are grown. Even my grandkids don't live here. So I lose connection with those youth. But when you do this program, they recognize you. So when you're in Alva, I mean, you know, you're in Walmart, they will come up and say, you know, how are you? I may not remember their names, but they remember me. So 
I would just say you lose your crowd when the summer school's over, though. Right. I, mean, I think that was the deal. And then, you know, the schools let us use their freezer space. And, you know, I've had, I always had the idea to do it at the swimming at the swimming pool and just give out a free lunch to all those children that come up there. But because of the liability and stuff, they don't want to do that. You know, I thought maybe the location, we would, because the program says to take the program to the church. I heard this on the news this morning, and I just thought it was great. A society is judged by how it treats its weakest members, and that has several different um, authors, but I think it was attributed to church, Winston Churchill, and I just think in the light of losing all those children in Manchester, that we just need to really focus on the kids in our community, because they are our greatest future. Thank you.